On that dead body show, we talk about death and murder, and at times, we may use explicit language. Let me guess, you've hit record again. Well, that's what we're supposed to do. Uh, hey guys, welcome to episode 8. So, last week our episode was a little... Sketchy. Yeah. Sorry. Let's not forget that I just had surgery and was barely able to sit up. But. She's horizontal. No, she's no longer horizontal. I would like to be horizontal. I'm exhausted as fuck. Um, in, in mail carrier land, it is now busy time between now and the end of January. So, most likely every episode from now until then, I will probably sound like I'm dying to death. And need to be on my own podcast. I picked this episode this week because I just we were we were brainstorming, and then I like out of the blue I texted Brady at like she wasn't even awake, but I was awake, and I texted her at like two or three in the morning. I was like, I know the episode, and then I just wrote one word. Yes. So, anybody who has been into true crime for any amount of time should know from this word, like, this phrase, what case this is. But the word that he texted me was antifree. <laughs> Antif- it's, it's, I think it's part of a word. I think she stopped herself. That bitch knew what she was saying. Okay, so, this week's episode is episode eight. Stacy Castor, the, the anti free, <laughs> the anti free murderer, comes to be around the roses, pocket full of roses, ashes, ashes, we we gave away too much with our intro mm-hmm. there. Uh, I mean, you of course know that it's about Stacy Castor because we give you her name in the title. The name of the episode is The Anti-Free Murderer. So, I mean, I mean, what the hell else do you think we're going to talk about? Not antifreeze. <laughs> okay, so August 2005, uh, a 911 call. Picture it. Picture it. Sicily. Sicily. No. Picture <laughs> it. Onondaga County, New York. August 20th, 2005. I was wondering how you said that. Say it again. Onondaga. I'm, I'm guessing. I'm guessing. I'm... <laughs> when I read it, I was like, what? <laughs> okay, sorry. Go ahead. So it's 2005. I'm figuring probably sometime mid-morning. 911 call comes in. So, Stacy Castor calls the local sheriff and she's like doing the typical fake worried whiny bitch routine. Wellness check. My husband, he didn't show up for work. She, works, they were... in, she works in the same office. He owns yeah. a, a heating and air conditioning uh, HVAC company. Yeah, and she was his office manager. And he didn't show up for work that day. And she was concerned. Um, she wanted the officers. To, she wanted them to do a, a wellness check. I mean, she wanted them to do a wellness check, but it was more like she was setting up her story. To, in my view, I feel like she laid out the groundwork for her lie. In this 911 call. So let, let's let's play the 911 call for you. Police communications, can I help you? My name is Stacy Castor. My husband didn't show up to work this morning. I don't know what's going on. I'm just getting a little concerned because I haven't talked to him since five o'clock in the morning on Sunday when he locked me out of the bedroom. So she goes on in this call to say that um, he's not responding to messages. That she's calling him, um, and she she's a afraid that he might have 
he might have done something to himself. She, yeah, she doesn't know what what he would do, but that he, right. since he's not... That she had tried to yeah. gather up the kids and leave him before, and he said that... If you do, you'll be sorry. If, yes. I admit what? <laughs> right. So, uh, they they send out an officer who 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 comes in. I'm, I'm guessing he busts down the bedroom door. Well, I will say this. What's not clear in anything that I've ever read or any documentary I've ever watched on this is where she's calling from. Like, she makes it sound like in the 911 call that she could possibly still be at work, but she's there when the deputies respond. Which doesn't really matter except for, to me, if that was you in there, you're not responding. Fuck y'all. I'm busting the door down. I don't understand why she... I'm... I'm... Okay, so... Do you understand what I'm saying, though? Like, that if that's you in there, and I'm scared you've hurt yourself, I'm not just going to call the police and have them come bust the door down. I'm going to do my damnedest to get in there to you. Right, right. So, where... Like I said, it doesn't... I can't figure out where she was at, but she is there when the police get there. And she's outside. Yeah, she's outside. The officer. Why is she not inside? That's my question. So yeah, she's definitely trying to distance herself from the body. The um, the officer shows up, uh, kicks the door down, kicks the kicks the bedroom door down, uh, goes inside, comes back out. Uh, short time later, and she asks, is, "Is he okay?" And the officer just responds, "No, he's not." The paramedics arrive. They uh, go inside. And and come right back out, and they leave. <laughs> um, In which and, she screams, "He's not dead! He's not dead!" But he was. What they actually found inside the room was David Castor, face down, naked, <laughs> naked, <laughs> naked, <laughs> <laughs> on a mattress, on a bare mattress. Um, that was covered in brown vomit. vomit. It looks to me like dry, almost like a bloody vomit to me, like a dried. Um, but he, he's face down and his legs are crossed at the ankle. Under the bed is a container of antifreeze. And on the nightstand is a glass with green liquid, which yeah, is, which is antifreeze. antifreeze. Um, now, the glass, to me, is what I think you call a what? What did you say it was? A rocks glass. Yeah. like A, a short, like, five-ounce tumbler-type yeah. glass. What I would say, like, if you were drinking, like, shots of whiskey. Not, not shots of whiskey, but, you know, like... Whiskey on the rocks. Yeah, whatever. There you go. Right. Anyway, so there's one of those with a uh, green liquid in it. And then there's another one with cranberry juice. That had, well, the remnants of cranberry juice. Right. And, right. Uh, and on the nightstand also is the light cranberry juice container. And a bottle of apricot brandy. Right. Ooh, apricot brandy. So, <laughs> the, the, that right there to me would be like... Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> There's the whole... The, the apricot brandy. Who the first of all, first of all, it also needs to be said that this man had a shotgun under his bed. Right, she had told the police when 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 the cop arrived that he had a shotgun under his bed, and that's why she was worried. And she was worried he might have have killed himself. And since there was no response, I mean, you would have thought if she would have heard the shotgun, I guess he did it after. Unless she went to work. Yeah. So, <laughs> I am so sorry. So they gather up all these bottles and glasses and and containers of antifreeze and. Take them in to, you know, they, they're not sure what's going on at this point. They're thinking it, it possibly is a, a suicide. suicide. But they, they gather up the evidence like good crime scene investigators do. And also notice in the garbage in the kitchen is a turkey baster with the remnants of a green liquid, a green liquid as well. Which yes. they're assuming is the antifreeze at this point, I'm, I'm sure. Which I don't understand, again, because if you're killing yourself, would you not be chugging it? Why would you be turkey-bastering yourself with it? 
Well, I, I have a theory about that, but we'll discuss that later on. Um, they also find a, a, a broken towel bar in the bathroom, according to one report, and a bottle of Ambien with the lid off. I'm sorry, an empty bottle that once contained Ambien lying with the lid off on the counter in the bathroom. Now, I don't know if it's ever discussed autopsy-wise if he had Ambien in his system. I don't know. So, I'm wondering if that was... Just a, oh, well, I took the last one, throw the thing on the counter because I'm a jackass. Or a... Or I'm saving it for beads because, you know... Well, that too. <laughs> or or a setup, like, right. to make them think, you know, he's so depressed, he's been drinking, and he's drinking antifreeze, right. and he took all the Ambien. So, they, they found... That, I believe they took the bottle of Ambien, they took the turkey baster, they took the glasses, they took the antifreeze container, they took the bottle of liquor and the bottle of cranberry, light cranberry juice. Right. For fingerprints and swabs. and. So they also have to get fingerprints from the other people who live in the house, which is normal procedure. Right. I mean, to include or exclude. Stacy, her two daughters, uh, Ashley and Bree. And they got their fingerprints and... They're also, you know, they're interviewing them. Um. So, while interviewing Stacy, she informs detectives that they argued over their anniversary trip because he, he wanted, wanted to go yeah, alone, he, just them. them. On, as she put it, a pretty extensive trip. But And they had always taken... The girls. The girls on their vacation. And he wanted to go along. And one of them had a job and couldn't go anyway. You're right. And that was the older one. The younger one, she didn't want to leave home alone. For two weeks. Right. Who the fuck goes on a two-week anniversary trip? (sighs) Who are these people? Right. Well, I mean, he did own his own company. Right. So, they go on this two-week... No, they're arguing about it. And she says he locks himself in the bedroom. Because they're arguing. After a... Yeah, yeah, he comes out and they have a discussion. A seven-hour <laughs> argument in the garage. I'm. I, we've been together since 2005 for a long time. We've been together for too long. No right. joke. But so we've been together a long time, and I don't think that I've ever. I don't know that there's anything I would argue for seven hours over. I can't even think, I mean... And and neither of them is the, I don't want to talk about it. I mean, you know, neither of them is the, I don't want to talk about it right now, leave me alone person. What the fuck? How how could you keep an argument going for seven hours, and not only for seven hours, but in the goddamn garage? I mean... Okay, Okay, because that's like, so if we're fighting, and I stomp off to the bedroom, and then I, you know, maybe come back to the living room, like, one more thing, motherfucker. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. (laughs) But, like, so you're telling me for seven fucking hours, y'all just stayed in the garage? What the fuck did you say? Yeah. (laughs) I'm sorry, what? I'm sorry, what? Um, Uh, I just don't buy that, and I don't think that any any one of the investigating officers bought that. None of them that were married for any extensive time. One, yeah. it, even if they weren't married, even if they were just in a relationship, like I just say, I'm sorry. Yeah. So, I call total and complete <laughs> bullshit on that. After this, he goes and locks himself in the bedroom again, and she doesn't see him. Right. For the weekend, according. To she her. goes and stays with a friend. So she hasn't stays with somebody. I don't remember if it was a friend or a family, but so she's trying to call him, and he won't answer. And that's when, you know, when he doesn't show up for work, that's when she's like, okay, he would never miss work. And that's that's her story, and she's sticking to it. I'm sorry. And they don't I'm going to come up with a better fucking story than we argued for seven straight hours in the fucking garage. So they, they do an autopsy on the body, and it's discovered that he did ingest alcohol and ethylene, antifreeze. Yeah. Ethylene glycol. Right. Antifreeze. Uh, and it, it's pretty pretty gruesome way to die. Uh, It crystallizes in your organs and causes them to fail. It's extremely painful. Then you die. (laughs) But it's painful. Yeah, and it's it's not, it's it's kind of prolonged. I mean, it's not like, oh, uh, 
and you're dead. No, it's this is like over the course of hours. Flu symptoms and nausea and vomiting and right. intense and, stomach pain and drunkenness acting. Yeah, so I, I, you, you you're not public. really drunk. No, but you're you slur your, right. You slur your. I mean, right. So yeah. it appears as though you are drunk, intoxicated. In fact, and there's been several cases of this poisoning throughout the whole. Usually, women killing men. Right. Um, and so almost, it's a woman way to kill. I mean, I mean, it's a female way to kill poison. Look, I'm a cold-hearted motherfucker, but, but I ain't poisoning but anybody this, like this. This is this is would be a horrible, horrible, horrible way to kill someone. You, so yes. So he has ethylene glycol. They have deemed it a suicide. Which and that well, I was just gonna say that wasn't a big shock because right. Right. because he was there and it looks like he was locked in because poor her she was on on the lawn waiting oh. for the police. This bitch. <laughs> right. So, so what did come as a shock though, and I'm I, I'm saying shock, but what the lead detective had to say about it was her fingerprints were found. On the glasses, but his weren't. Right. Which now, they were found on the bottom. But, okay, like so... Like, if you were taking it out for, you know, like... But what I don't understand is... And she she said she made, she fixed him a drink. Right. In the middle of this seven-hour damn argument, hold right. the fuck on, baby, I need you to get me some cranberry juice. Which I'm going to call bullshit on again, because when you and I I'm, argue, I, I ain't asking you and for I'm shit. Telling you, they were glasses. This is not, like, plastic cups or solo cups, and... I'm not asking for anything in a fucking glass if we're arguing. I'm not asking <laughs> you for anything. I'm not getting asking. I'm not asking you to go anywhere near the kitchen where the sharp shit is while we're arguing. Ooh. So she, in the middle of this argument, fixed him a drink of cranberry juice and apricot brandy. That's fucking nasty in I, itself. Okay, I drink Southern Comfort and cranberry juice, but whatever. Uh, the Ooh. police don't buy this shit, even though the coroner says it's a suicide. And labels right. it as a suicide on the on the on the death report on the autopsy report. Right. The police are not buying it, and they continue to to gather evidence. They right. wait for DNA to come back. You know they've swabbed everything, fingerprinted everything. They wiretap her house, and and at this point, the lead detective has found out that her first husband is buried. Kind of to the left of the, 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 her second husband. They have like, her second husband, and she share a tombstone like the right. you know, the casters. Right, and then like to the Stacey left over there and, is her first husband. Right, and her father on the other side of that. That is fucking insane. It's like a one of the family members said it's her little death monument. <laughs> I could see that. I could see it. However, this is where the name of our episode comes in because. They question her about how her fingerprints got on the glass. Yes. And she says... Well, when I poured, poured the, the antifree... antifree <laughs> I mean, I mean the cranberry... Herself. Yeah, and yeah. she said, I mean the cranberry juice. When I poured the cranberry... When I poured the antifree... I mean cranberry juice. And the cop was like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> you, can, you can say antifree in my house and everybody knows what case this is. <laughs> Our 11-year-old hates this episode because she said antifree. It upsets him greatly. Right. But, so, everybody knows, yeah. Everybody knows this case. So, at this point, um, the lead detective has, as I previously said, noticed that her first husband, like, they're like, you know, can we talk to the first husband? Like, right. has anybody got a hold of this guy? And so, somebody's like, dude, like, no, he he's, died he's, too. he's dead too. He's like to the left over there, like, you know. So, um, they want to find died, out... He died young. At, at 38. 38 years old of yeah. a heart attack, which is crazy. Right. Now, don't forget, though, our friend Courtney had a... a, a I, I'm just a, saying. What was it? A widowmaker at 25. However... She has heart... Right. Congenital issues. Right. Anyway, so, I mean, you know, I'm just saying, just being young is not always a... Right. But, he, I mean, and then... He first, died under similar circumstances. Right. He was sick. Right. Vomiting projectile he vomited across yeah. a, a coffee table is how one of the one of the young right. the older girl right you know? or the, no, yes, the, the older girl the older girl describes mm -hmm. it that he was just talking or no he was laying there set up projectile vomited mm -hmm. and then laid back down like nothing had happened yeah <laughs> like whoa. he was probably fucking delusional right um anyway and, so they they exhume him 
at this point, they're like, dude, so, like, he died, and so they decide to exhume him, and they... Which is totally weird, because they got usually a cor- have to have... They yeah. got a court order. They did get a court order, and the toxicology actually said that he had died from... But it's, it's strange that they got the court order, because I'm almost positive that I saw or read somewhere that their 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 head the the head of their department or whatever said look the coroner already said it was a, a suicide attack. oh no uh, for the like, first for the first husband said it was it was a suicide Heart closed attack. the case right the first husband they I'm said, sorry the, no the, the first husband who died I'm saying right. oh, the oh, first sorry. death okay. that they yeah. know of oh okay I'm sorry you're right so the, yeah. Mr Castor right. David Castor sorry I'm sorry was a suicide closed the case right and they're like no, there's so yeah. much you can close the case. Yeah. But there's there's mitigating evidence here that makes us believe that it's not a suicide and that can be changed at a later date. I think and I think that they were on that same page up until she said when I poured the antifree. Right. Even though I she mean, didn't like, finish the fucking just come, this she, she just, just said she poured it. the antifree, okay? Okay. <laughs> um anyway, so they they exhume first husband and he his toxicology screening said the same. And now, and a freeze. So now they're the, like, he had the crystals in right. his in his body right. as well. So when he had died in 1999, um, he had been coughing, acting unsteady, and looked kind of swollen. And it, she was about to leave him. She was about to get a divorce from him. And all you know, she was like, "I don't want to do it right there around Christmas." You know, the kids. You know, that'll just mess them up if we divorce at Christmas. And um, guess what Santa brought you, Timmy? Right. A divorce, right? <laughs> a stepdad. <laughs> um, so uh, everybody in his family told him to go to the doctor, but he didn't make it. No, he didn't make it. Um, mm. The oldest daughter, Ashley, was eleven, and she was alone with him when what what we now know, and she says this haunts her to this day, was when he died. Um, if when you were talking about when he sat up and he threw up and everything, and she just thought he was sick, you know, with whatever had been going on for months, and got up to go get the younger sister from school. And she actually, um, you know, blames herself because she didn't realize at 11 years old what she was seeing. Right, but she was 11. Right. Well, forgive yourself, girl. I hope she I mean, has. Yeah, I would think. I really hope she I has. Think, I would think. Yeah. By now. But. So they, at this point, are like, okay, so we need to arrest her. Right. So they they go and um, they they try to interview her, and that's when she's like, this this interview's over. I don't I don't want to talk about this anymore. You know, I'm I'm leaving, whatever. And that's when she looks and she sees the picture, like the lead of detective. The yeah, the lead detective's kind of gathering everything up, and she sees that, and she goes, "What is that?" And he goes, oh, don't worry about it. This, this interview's are over. over. <laughs> and she's like, no, what is that? And and But she's seen it, and she realizes she's fucked. I think she yeah. realizes at that so point. So she goes to her daughter and says, Let's you know drink. what? This has been just rough on me. Let's get drunk. Right. So they get drunk, and then well, that's because, they get drunk again. <laughs> well, but the reason she says it's been a rough week is because Ashley had started college, the older daughter. And they came and questioned, questioned her. her. And told her that they exhumed her dad, her father, the right. first husband. So she called the mom and is like, why did they come to my school? <laughs> she is just like so indignant. That motherfucker. She said, that son of a, that that son son of a, of a bitch. bitch. That son of a bitch. Because she knew. He came to your school? school. <laughs> you know... And and Ashley actually brings up a good point. She says, "How did they even know I was going to be here?" Well, they've been wiretapping her. For well, yeah, but nobody a while knows. But they evidence. don't know that they're watching everybody. At right. That point. Right. But they don't. But they don't know that. Ashley has no reason to know that right. because right. Um, and I think that's when Stacy realizes though they've been watching closer than she thinks, and that's when she, you know, she's like, "Fuck this. Let's let's drink." And they get drunk, and it, it, it's a little party. Yeah. So she calls her again and says, hey, let's get drunk again. <laughs> That's because she actually woke up from the first one. Right. <laughs> You're still around. Let's drink again. Right. She said that the drink was nasty tasting. So after the second drinking party. Binge. Yeah, right. Um... 
17 hours later or so, the younger sister, Bree, finds Ashley just fucking comatose, like, out of it. And, of course, she's like, Mom, you know, Ashley's, like, fucking not responding. I'm sure she didn't say fucking, but Ashley's not responding, and... But you do say fucking when you tell stories, so it's cute. I say fucking. Yeah, I do. So, so while, she, while the mom, while Stacy's making her second 911 call in, in, you know, in the house, you know, oh my God, my daughter's not responding. Ashley, Ashley. Right. Yeah, she's fake as No, this fun. is not happening. Again. Yeah. Um, the sister, Bree, kind of like, you know, walks away. I don't know where she goes, but she comes back and then, bam, magically delicious. There's a fucking suicide note beside her sister. That wasn't there. She testifies to that, that that note wasn't there originally. But then when she comes back, the note's there. And, um, it's, it's, you know, she, Stacy like, janks the, the note from her, like, oh my god, what is this? And then in the note, she's like, uh, you know, I, I killed Daddy, which would be the first husband, and I killed David, and I'm just so sorry. And in the note, she actually supposedly put into free. She typed out into free. Oh, so maybe she didn't cut off the word when she was saying it. Maybe she's just a hillbilly. I, 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 right. She, well, she says in that interview that the reason she said into free instead of into freeze is because she caught her, you know, like she stopped her, she didn't finish her word. But in the typed suicide letter, it says into free. You're like, right. that wasn't me in that interview. That was her. Her. Right. <laughs> right. right. So I'm not the one who said I poured the antifree. She said it. Right. But whatever. Um, and it's kind of funny that when you brought this case up to me, you did mention um, the other case with the fireman and the police officer. Because she says at some point that... Um, her husband got the idea to kill himself with Anna Freeze while they were watching the news report about Lynn Turner, which is the girl you the, right that killed her. Mm-hmm. She was her like husband. single-handedly trying to get the public service. <laughs> uh, yeah, this bitch. Yeah, <laughs> she was trying to kill. And public she service. herself, if I'm not mistaken, Lynn Turner was a uh, dispatch. Wow. Which so was Stacy Castro. She killed what a, a fireman and a cop. cop. Yeah. yeah. And and um, Stacey, uh, again, a yeah. female way to kill people. I just cannot even. Anyway, so, when Ashley wakes up in the hospital, they're like, so, let's talk. And she's like, what are you talking about? I didn't do this. Like, why, why'd you try to kill yourself? And she's like, I didn't. And they were like, but your note. And she was like, I didn't fucking write that. I was drinking with mom. <laughs> yeah. She's like, you know, she tells them, you know, we was, drank, you know, I mean, we drank twice. Who want to drink? I mean, you're, she was it's a, a 17, 18 a, year old kid. Right? Your mom's like, let's get drunk. And you're like, yeah. Hell Yeah. <laughs> I mean, no, no teenager is going to be like, dude, no, right. it's not right. Maybe Nadia, Nadia wouldn't have done it. Yeah, all right. right. Nadia would be like, no, mom, that's illegal. I'm going to have to turn you in, mom. Uh, right. I'm calling right now. I'm checking my INL grades and I'm calling the police on you, mom. That would have been Nadia. Right. Um. Anyway, so the police are like, you know, what, what do you mean you didn't write this? And she's like, I did not try to kill myself. I did not harm my dad. I did not harm David. I did not do this. I didn't write that. So with this and all of the evidence they've been collecting since 2005, you know, the past two years, uh, they decide to arrest her. They arrest Stacy Castor. For the murder of David Castor. Second degree murder. Second degree murder Which of David Castor. Which I don't understand, Castor. but go ahead. And because it wasn't premeditated. It was just a, it happened. Whatever. <laughs> and the attempted murder of her daughter. Both of them were planned, though. You can't, you, you don't just go in the kitchen and decide to put Anna for, you know what? Fuck you, I'm going to put Anna for his new drink. This is spur of the moment. Like... She kept antifreeze in the cabinet. In the that was a different one, wasn't it? No, was no, it? that was Lynn Turner. That was Lynn Turner. That yeah. was Lynn Turner. Right. For some reason, she just fucking kept that in the kitchen. Like, whoopsie. Yeah. So while 
while they... Um, there, I mean, there was just so much evidence against right. her. Right. They searched the computer, and they found several drafts of the suicide note. Um, and, and they found with the timestamps that Ashley was in school. So, she didn't write these fucking multiple drafts, nor the final draft. Um, they... The prosecutor said, you know, hey, this, this suicide attempt is, is BS. It was a they, planned out murder they attempt. They also had uh, wiretaps where they had tapped the, the house where they can right. they can listen through a wiretap without the phone being off the right, hook. Right, right. And they heard typing sounds when she was the only one there. So that was pretty damning. Uh well, of the, course, you know, you don't know somebody's, and you know, type in your house. So the whatever. DNA did come back on the turkey baster, and it was her fingerprints on the turkey baster, along with this, and here's my theory from earlier. I know this is, I, I, off air, I No, I think, I think this. you're right. The, they mentioned that her fingerprints were found on the turkey baster, and David's DNA was found on the chip, but they didn't say saliva. They just said DNA. They just said DNA. And that paired with the fact that he was face down, naked. I don't think that that was brown vomit. I'm, I'm going to throw that out there like I that. I mean, you got to stop and think about what ethylene glycol does to your system. I think that she boofed him with a turkey baster full of ethylene glycol. Like a antifree enema. Antifrenema. Oh, it's an anti- a frenema. It's a frenema. Antifrenema. I'm going to throw the fuck up. <laughs> I'm so sorry. But that is my theory. And I'm going to stick with my theory until someone no, says No, I mean, I'm I think... I, well, I mean... I, well, seeing the crime scene that, photo with the brown vomit stains. And, dude, if somebody's trying to put something up my bomb, I'm crossing my shit at the ankles. And might wrap it around like them girls do when they're sitting. <laughs> the only other explanation that I can think of, and I've obviously never been poisoned with antifree, but... Have you ever had a... <laughs> no, don't answer. We're good. We're good. Actually, I don't think I have. We're good. Honest. Don't want one. Anyway, um, so the only other thought process I have is having... The stomach virus, what, 17 times in one year when I first started at Primrose 9,000 years ago. I remember being absolutely delusional out of my mind and just falling into bed, coming from the bathroom. So, with the towel bar being down, like, did he just stumble? Why was the bed unmade, though? Like, <laughs> that did bothers you so bad. Yes, it does, because, yeah. Yeah, she gets up to go to the bathroom sometimes 2 o'clock in the morning and makes me get up to, to fix, fix the, bed. the sheet. The fitted sheets come off. That's because we all toss and turn. Like we talk, but I just, I mean, I just, I can't figure out why the bed was not made. If So we're fighting for seven hours and then I'm going to, what, go in there and like all hostile, like unmake the bed? Only after you make me a cranberry and apricot. <laughs> I just don't. <laughs> It makes it, I just, I want to know. I have questions, and this, you, I will never know why the bed wasn't made, but it really fucking bothers me. I think she unmade the bed, because she knew what the fuck was going to happen in the mess. Well, I mean, there was probably already a mess, and the brown vomit stains were just the residual, because there was probably a, I mean, there's, a, I'm, I'm done with that. <laughs> That, you really got to want somebody dead to stick a turkey baster in their ass. <laughs> the dog said, yeah. I mean, Decky Stars, what do you think? Dexter says he thinks the turkey baster is a, it's a firm theory. I mean, I do too, but I'm just thinking to myself, self? <laughs> <laughs> do I want this dude dead that bad? I mean, that's... That's hardcore right there. No, You're that's, yeah. that's some follow through. So during the trial, the main defense, Stacy's main defense, her her lawyer and she tried to blame the oldest daughter Ashley for for everything. That she that's her story. She's sticking to it. Ashley's the crazy one. She killed both my husbands. Yeah. Well, and she also tries to make her look crazy and right. and, and and depressed and suicidal and. Um, 
this doesn't work. Right. The uh, she's found found guilty. The judge. Brandy wants to play the whole thing. I want I to do. chop it up. I do because I think it's, it's a little important. Long. Brandy it's wants four to play minutes. The whole thing. Brandy gets what Brandy wants. Like me, I think because well, I mean you've already said you don't have your favorite pen with you. You got one right. of them throwaway pens. I do, so it could so. happen. But I mean, like I, I think it's important because a lot of judges don't quite say what he said, and I mean, like it's usually just a whole, you know, hey, I don't buy your shit, and here's the sentence. It's, I mean, it's it's pretty direct. He uh. He, it's about three minutes long. You know, in my 34 years in the criminal justice system as a lawyer and as a judge, I've seen serial killers, I've seen contract killers, I've seen murderers of every variety and stripe, but I have to say, Mrs. Castor, you are in a class by yourself. What you did to David Castor can only be described as premeditated torture. And while you're not being held accountable for it here, I must say that what you did to Michael Wallace was also premeditated torture. Premeditation is not something we often see in the criminal courts, but it certainly is present in both of these instances. Now, as bad and as evil as that is, what you tried to do to your daughter Ashley is simply something that I find I almost can't comprehend. Uh, I've seen a lot of defendants come through this court system including some whose parents tried to take the blame for what they did, but I've never seen one who was prepared to sacrifice their child to shift the blame away from themselves. You know, I listened carefully to the testimony of both your daughters, and I have daughters too. Now, they're older than yours, but they have a similar gap in their ages. And I listened not only to the wonderment of your daughter Ashley as she tried to comprehend what you did to her, I also listened to the horror your daughter Bree experienced <clears throat> in finding her older sister almost dead. You not only deprived those children of their father, but you were prepared to deprive them of one another. And <clears throat> I'm certain that your daughters, like my daughters, like most children who have siblings, expect and are comforted by the knowledge that when their parents pass on, they'll at least have each other to grow old and share life with. You almost succeeded in murdering one child and orphaning the other. You know, the, the ranks, this, that ranks, in my judgment, is one of the most reprehensible things I think I've ever seen in the criminal justice system. I know that you maintain your innocence, but I'll tell you, in my view, the evidence of your guilt is overwhelming. Unlike many defendants who pass through my courtroom, you're not just a danger to the general public, you're a danger to the people who love you and are closest to you. And I believe that the sentence I'm about to impose will remove that danger once and for all. Upon your conviction for murder in the second degree, the murder of David Castor on count one of the indictment, it's the sentence and judgment of the court that should be sentenced to a minimum of 25 years and a maximum of life in the New York State Correctional System. Upon your conviction for attempted murder in the second degree of your daughter Ashley Wallace on count two of the indictment, it is the sentence and judgment of the court that should be sentenced to a determinate sentence of 25 years in the New York State Correctional System to be followed by a five-year period of post-release supervision. I direct that that sentence run consecutive to the sentence I've just imposed on count one of the indictment. Upon your conviction of offering a false instrument for filing in the first degree on count three of the indictment, it's a sentence in judgment of the court that should be sentenced to a minimum of one and a third years and a maximum of four years in the New York State Correctional System. I direct that sentence to run consecutively to the sentence I've imposed on counts one and counts two of the indictment. There's a $275 surcharge. Ms. Castor, you have 30 days with which to appeal the sentence in judgment of the court. We are recessed. Thank you. Thank you. So that was the sentencing. I know it was a little bit long, but I feel like hearing what he had to say to her was important because she was never tried for her first husband's death. And he points that out. He makes sure that that's pointed out and how shitty it was of, you know, what she did to Ashley and, and to Brie, too. Um, but, like, literally trying to kill Ashley. Um, under under New York sentencing guidelines, she would have had to have served 51 years, like 51 and a third, third years, years, before she was even eligible for parole. Putting her to be in, like, 80-something, wouldn't it right. have been? Yeah. She was, I mean... But she, she did, out. but she did not serve out her entire sentence. She didn't even serve out hardly any of it because in 2016... On June 11th, she was found dead in her cell 
Um, At the age of 48 it, years old. Yeah. It was later determined to be a heart attack. Which is kind of fitting. Since that's what they said. Because, you know, the first husband was rushed to the hospital and they told her it was a heart attack, blah, blah, blah. Right. So I think it was very fitting that homegirl died of a heart attack. So. Right. So that's the story of uh, Stacy Castor, the Anna Free murderer. Right. While she was not um, actually labeled a serial killer, most most things that I've read and seen said that she probably would have killed again. Some of the, the family members believe that she may have killed her father, who I mentioned was right there in her the little death murder. Yeah, murder circle thing. Right. So her murder. How did he die? Or did they have a heart that, attack? An alleged heart attack. Right. No, that said that he was like in the hospital getting better and then she visited no. and he all of a sudden took a turn for the worst and she was the executrix executator uh, yeah she she was in charge she of his will shit. yeah so this bitch right right so that's three people with a cooling off period what i would like right what <laughs> i would like to know well right I mean, so, if we're I mean, going to go by the book, but right. they didn't charge her. She never was charged with her, her first husband's murder, and the family just believes, her own family believes, that she killed the, the patriarch of the family. If y'all get a chance, um, look for the 2020 episode on this. This bitch is stone cold. Like, she just sits there and is like, I mean, Ashley was my best friend, and it, it's just really disheartening to see a mother be so emotionless about not only losing two husbands, but describing how she pretty much lays it all on Ashley. Like, even up until, I mean, her death, she still blamed it on Ashley. Guys, we are speaking of laying things. (laughs) We're about to lay this one to bed. Can we lay me to bed? <laughs> I'm fucking exhausted, dude. I know, I know. Well, before we go to bed, I do want to uh, play the promo for um, a couple of fellow Alabama true crime podcasters. Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, we're gonna play uh, the. We're gonna play their promo. We uh, we had the pleasure of meeting them at a live podcast uh, event uh, up on the bluff there. What was it? Wild. Wild Roast Cafe, I believe. The Wild Roast Cafe. Um, at a live podcast event. With um, them and Moms and Murder. Right. Uh, for Brandy's birthday. Uh, I know going to a live podcast doesn't seem like a big birthday present, but I don't leave the house a lot. So anytime I go in public, it's got to be something important. And Brandy's birthday is important to me. So she wanted to go see these ladies she'd listen to and... Uh, we went to the Wild Rose Cafe and saw them. And drug my best friend. So, gonna, uh, is it Corpus Delecti? Corpus Delecti? Yeah. Corpus Delecti? I don't know. Uh, we're I gonna, know. I've heard it said both ways. I'm, they yeah, say, they it say Delecti. Delecti. Yes. So, you were talking over me, sir. I'm sorry. We're saying the same thing. I know, right? <laughs> because we're the I'm fucking gonna, same person. I'm going to drop their promo in here. and uh, Go to we're, bed? We're going to go to bed. I'm going to play our, our song after after their promo. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Hey, y'all. Jen and Lindsay here from Corpus Delicti Podcast, here to tell you to check out our show. If true crime is your thing, it's ours, too, with a touch of lightheartedness and a dash of Southern charm. We cover compelling cases and crack them open for you. Serial killers, hitmen, historical hallmarks, we've got it all, and bring you new episodes every Tuesday morning. You can find us on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and most other podcast apps. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, too. That's C-O-R-P-U-S-D-E-L-I-C-T-I. See you Tuesday. Yeah.